We are back here at the Main Machinist channel. This is Jeremy Hiltz here at Hiltz Machine Works. And I have a shaft that I'm gonna duplicate for a customer. And uh, you'll see a whole video on that, but I wanna show an old school manual machinist trick on a tapered bore. So you see that this has a shaft, it's a tapered shaft with a key way in it. And uh, this is a clutch off of, I think it's off some kind of a wood splitter, he said. But anyway, his shaft is gone. We're gonna make another shaft. And I wanted to show you on this new part, what if we had to bore something? We're gonna turn that taper. But what if we had, we were gonna make a bore like this with a tapered bore with a keyway in it, and we had to make that ourselves. What would we do? Now you could try to take measurements. Maybe you would even take, some of you might say, I would take a measurement here. And I would take a measurement here and I would do the math and I would calculate the taper. And that's fine and dandy, but we all know how hard it can be sometimes to get an accurate measurement on an angled sloping internal bore like this. A, a surface that has a angle on it is hard to make sure that you're measuring directly across to get a perfect measurement to do your math. Maybe you have an idea um, of another way. Maybe you have a small protractor that could go down in there or something to try to get an angle at it, but that's not really accurate. That's only a reference measurement. So I'm gonna show you today an old school machinist trick. I'm gonna put this part in the lathe. And you can see here that I have a dial test indicator, nice brown and sharp indicator here, set up in the lathe. And I've already moved the compound very close to the angle that I think we would have to use to bore this, just by taking some simple reference measurements over there on the bench. But we wanna make sure that we are dead on, that we are gonna follow that taper when we go to bore ours. So I'm gonna show you now how to set the compound so that it will turn to that exact taper. All right, so we have the part in the chuck. And I would use a four jaw chuck for this operation for demonstration purposes, I just have it in the three jaw. But if I was gonna do this for a customer and do a, an actual completed part, what I would do is I would turn everything until we have to do the final operation on this bore with the taper. And then what I would do is I would come in, I'd put this in, I would dial the original part in perfectly on the four jaw chuck. Then I'm gonna have my indicator, and this is very important. It's hard to see on the camera but you want this to be on the center line of the bore or else our trick is not gonna work. If you have it up above or below center line, it will not read accurately and this isn't gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, bring our dial test indicator in and we're gonna set a zero. And I have this set really close now. And then when we do this, we're gonna come over here. We're not gonna to touch the carriage at all. We're not gonna move that. In fact, it'd be a good idea to lock it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed in only using the compound and we're gonna see if the indicator moves. Now, as we advance in towards the chuck, deeper into the bore, if the indicator needle begins to read in the positive direction, we know that our angle isn't quite steep enough because we need to take this and we need to move the compound this way to get the angle uh, closer. If we start to lose on the needle and go in the negative direction, we need to take our angle and shorten it by hitting on this side with the hammer so that the indicator advances closer to the taper. And we're gonna continue this process back and forth until we can read dead zero for the entire length of dial test indicator. And depending on the depth of the bore, it may not be good enough to use just a uh, indicator like this one. You might want to use one with a longer probe. So take all that into consideration, but this is the trick and we'll show you now. Now you'll see that I have my zero set again and I'm gonna feed in with the compound now. You can see that the indicator 
is registering that we are moving probably close to 5 thousandths increase on the indicator over the length of the probe of the test indicator. So what does that mean? Let's think together. As we advance this in, the indicator needle is being pushed. So we need to take the angle here and move it in towards the center of the bore if we're going to get that to reduce as we travel towards the chuck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to continue to adjust by tapping here. You can think just like if you're indicating the vise on a bridge port table or anything else. We're gonna gently tap here and move a little bit and we're gonna retest the indicator. We've made our adjustment, we're back on zero. We're gonna advance again. Okay, we are now advancing three thousandths on the indicator. We're getting closer. We'll continue to tap it again. Set back up again. We're gonna turn the compound in. You can see I'm just turning the handle, feeding the compound in. We're getting very close. We are now just over one half thousandths, but that's not good enough. I'm gonna to continue to make adjustments and you'll see that it's gonna come dead on. Now, as I turn the compound in, we watch. You can see that it stayed right on zero. You had a little tiny bit of variation there, which is really the surface finish. But we are now in line with the taper. So now if we put a boring bar in the machine, and what I would do is I would, I would get my bar up in there, I would lock everything down and then only turn with the compound and we will turn that ID taper and we're able to figure out the angle of the taper without having to rely on any measuring tools, without having to worry about whether or not our measuring tools are accurate enough or if we're hitting the right spot or we're doing the right math. This is just an easy way to verify that you are set up at the correct angle to bore an ID taper or an OD taper using the compound and a dial test indicator. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll try to put on more manual machinist tricks as time goes on. Hope you enjoy.